Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Parker's Swamp. Uh, on this episode, I'm gonna be talking all about common snapping turtle eggs, how I incubated them, um, what I'm doing with them, how we saved them from the raccoons, and uh, how they're hatching out. So enjoy some footage of them hatching, that'll be awesome. And uh, hit the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave me a comment of what you guys think, and if you guys think you can do this. I'm about to show you my super low tech uh, way to incubate turtle eggs and it's like super duper low tech so uh, I think anyone can do it and if you have a chance to save some turtles that are nesting in your yard or something you absolutely should so uh, let's jump right in so here's Parker's swamp this is what I got going right now we got giant African bullfrogs we got alligator snapping turtles we got Blanding's turtles, common snappers, Blanding's, all sorts of good stuff. Leave me a Negro Fasciolata, fish, clawed frogs. But, uh, like I said, what we're here to talk about is common snapping turtle hatchlings. So here's my little makeshift incubator. I saw this on a, a YouTube video, went back and link that for you guys. So when I say low tech incubator, I mean like low tech incubator. I have a water heater and just these two glass cups, um, Dixie cups or whatever, no they're not Dixie, jar, I don't know what they're called, I forgot, ball jars or something. So I just put the Tupperware on top of there and set the, the uh, temperature right so that the inside of the Tupperware would be around 80 degrees and I can check that with my handy dandy heat gun. I would actually check inside of the Tupperware and got it up to 80 degrees. There's the lid of the Tupperware. I ended up puncturing a hole on purpose so that the uh, hatchlings would have some air because I didn't have that during their, their whole incubation process. What, uh, what's this stuff? It is vermiculite, that's right. So there's my giant bag of vermiculite. Hopefully years and years and years and years and years of incubating turtles. Um, Here's the terrapin saying hello. Here are the uh, alligator snapping turtles. One's buried up there. Oh, there we go, there's a guy. Just went under, just missed him. Let's see if we can sneak over here and see. Yeah, it's gonna be foggy. Okay, so that's them. Here's big old Brutus. So these are alligator snapping turtles, not to be confused with the common snapping turtles that are hatching right now. You can tell the difference because, well, right here, you see Brutus has his tongue lure, and that's what al that's what alligator snapping turtles do. They use that vermiform tongue lure, and he's trying to lure in those little guppies right into his mouth. Whereas the common snappers, they just go after it. They are very much aggressive. They're very much on the move, all up and about looking for their food, not waiting for it to come to them. Here are some of my common snappers. There's Milton. Milton's a stud. Milton's scary, man. He's got that reptilian look. I mean, they're all reptiles, but he's got the dead eyes. It's like, I'm gonna eat you if you get too close to me. So I pulled the eggs out of my makeshift incubator, and this little dude is the earliest guy, or gal. A tiny little baby common snapper. There's another little. It's hard to focus in there. There's another one pipping its head out. That looks like a claw. It looks like a foot. Yep. There you go. You see the claws there? Little baby snapping turtle claws. So I'm going to. Maybe fatten them up a little bit, and then we'll release them right back where the mom laid them, uh, right from the same little pond. It's a private, actually it's a private lake, and there are plenty of snapping turtles in there. So this is really cool. I love doing this. Anytime I get to help nature out a little bit and incubate some eggs in a stable environment, I can do it. Like When I can do it, I will do it because I love it. This one's ready to pop too. Um, so yeah, I, I incubated them for a couple months. I forgot the gestational period. 
if that is the right term, the incubation period, I guess, for common snappers. Um, grabbed them um, in June, sometime in June, and been incubating them ever since. I had the temperature up right at 80 degrees. Uh, some people might think that's a little too cold, others might think it's too warm. I think it's pretty good, it's pretty neutral. Uh, you, I think you'll get an average amount of male and female there. If you go warmer, I believe it's males, and if you go colder, I believe it's females. It might be vice versa or, or flipped around there, but not sure. So, yeah, these are the little guys, man. Like, it doesn't take much. You leave them in this little container, and uh, you give them their time, and nature does its thing. I mean, God made these turtles to hatch on their own. So it's super duper low effort, and we saved... I don't know, I haven't even counted them yet, but this many turtles, probably not all of these will hatch, but super cool to be a part of this and uh, to see the next generation of snappers come through. So just for reference here, that's my thumb, that's a brand new little baby. Let's see if, still got a little bit of a yolk sac. So I'm hard time focusing on this little guy. So yeah, still a little bit of yolk sac, still kind of shaped like an egg a little bit. This little snapper will round out uh, as it ooh, continues to grow. And they're active right away, like more than other turtles that we've hatched out here before. These snappers are raring to go. That's just the nature of a snapping turtle, isn't it? Like it's a, they're monsters. They're little, they're little monsters ready to go from the second they hatch ready to find some water, ready to go snap some stuff, ready to get into it. This one's the first one and would probably end up uh, puncturing the nest cavity and helping the other ones escape from their hole. Usually what happens is, if you guys have watched my episode with John Richards of Loggerhead Farms, uh, alligator snapping turtle farms, uh, what, what happens is they have a little cavity and once it starts raining, uh, the plug in the cavity, of the, in the nest cavity, it will collapse and the whole cavity collapses so that the turtles can then just walk right out. They can burrow and dig a little bit right out of the nest and it's super cool. So it, it has been raining here a ton. I don't know if that's synced up, if that's just like August was going to rain anyways or if the barometric pressure change signaled these guys to hatch. I don't know but I'm glad they did and this one is super cute. Okay so since the last filming we've had another one hatch. So we got two little baby common snappers in here. Let's see if I can focus man. Here's one. The other guy is deep in the grass there in the fake grass. So I just took the lid off to see if we had any more hatch overnight and success. Look at all these guys popping right now. They all seem to hatch right around the same time. I don't know what it is. Look at these guys over here all hanging out. They're all slimy looking. Look at this buddy. He's hatching. He's kind of scared of me a little bit. It's so cool. So yeah, they all some people say they make noises inside the egg, a little chirping and stuff, kind of signalize, uh, signifying it's time to hatch to each other. They're all poking their heads out, trying to explore the world. Oh, it's so cool. Look at this guy. He's popping too. See his little eyeball. It's really cool. I love that. So I will get the ones that are out of their shell. And I'll put them in the little tub. I'll get them a bigger tub, I'm sure. But success, man. These could have very well been eaten by raccoons. And now they are going to be exploring the world as help, healthy little babies. So I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, guys, so it's been a few more hours. We've had a bunch more little babies hatch out. And they're doing well. i got a little tiny, you know, janky heater in there for them. Keeping it warm. These dudes are so cool. This 
just want to zoom in on that. They're all over the place. They're just chilling. Some of them are a little bit more willing to explore than others. They've got their own little personalities built in, which is super cool. Let's see if any more have hatched out. So back to the makeshift incubator. I thought about getting a, like buying an incubator, but I always see such bad reviews. Oh yeah, buddy. And this thing's worked for me for years and years and years. This system, not this exact one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I'll say. Eleven newbies. Man, that's crazy. So I'm just gonna drop and plop these guys. Still got the yolk sac. The yolk sac is uh, what, what's gonna feed them for the next couple weeks, week or two. I'll have to change this water because you don't know, getting all the um, vermiculite in there. But oh, this little dude. Let's see if we can see that yolk sac. It's not focusing, and now I can't touch it because my hand's gross. All right, buddy. See, there's a. There we go. There's the yolk sac. See that? So that's like an umbilical cord type thing, and that's going to feed them. And usually they'd be sitting in their nest, and they'd absorb that, and then they'd wait for a rain, and the nest would collapse. But this is not nature. This is Parker's swamp. And so these guys are getting plop and dropped. I'm going to have to get a bigger tub for them. I'm probably going to do like a little kiddie pool. And I'm not going to keep them very long. I don't know, a week or two. Maybe I'll keep a couple for a little bit longer and, and raise them up a little bit better. But I'm going to keep dropping and plopping with uh, two hands. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so they hatched out successfully, which is awesome. I have 35 of them, I believe. I think there's one egg I'm still waiting for. But we got them in this Rubbermaid, uh, Rubbermaid tub. It is 50 gallons, 55, 50. But I've got like six gallons, I don't know, five. Maybe, maybe 10 gallons in here. So super shallow for them. Like I said before, I'm not keeping these guys very long, just until they absorb their yolk sacs, and then maybe a couple cool ones I'll hold on to for a couple more months. But uh, yeah, the goal here is just to save them from the raccoons. You know, like one more clutch, not getting snapped up. Look at that one's got his egg tooth. See that white thing on his nose? That is his egg tooth. That's how he got out of his his uh, egg, which is awesome. They use that to puncture the shell when they pip. This one's kind of light. Ooh, that's a really cool color on this guy. Yeah, I love to see the, the variety. Some are lighter. I mean, that's like genetics. That's Punnett squares and all that good stuff. So, some of them have dominant. Other have recessive. We can see there's a color difference in those two. I love that. Yeah, it's so cool, man. So, I'm a sucker for the lighter ones. But, look at that one. Yeah. A little bit lighter there. That's cool. So, they're going to be just growing out in here for a little while. Uh, I'm probably going to put a little small filter in here, but I'll give them water changes daily or uh, every other day. There's enough water in here, I think, to be cool. This guy's hanging out on the little filter, uh, the heater. The heater is just to keep it, I mean, I can't even set the temperature on that heater. It's a really garbage one, but 
it does get a little colder at night uh, outside the turtle room so that's to keep them warm look at this guy look at that cool color that's really nice got a darker one back there I don't know maybe they're all looking light oh no that guy yeah there you can see a, uh, a contrast look on the edge of the shell all around the perimeter that's really cool I love that alright so that's uh, that's that we successfully hatched out a bunch of common snapping turtles and look forward for uh, a release video where I'll be releasing them in uh, spurts because I don't want to release them all at once in case there's a largemouth bass or like a northern pike around that's going to snap them all up. The goal is to save these turtles, right? Uh, so they're common snapping turtles. There's a lot of them out and about in the world, but they're some of my favorite turtles and they their nests get predated, predated, predated like all the time. So I want to save them. I want them to make it. I want more common snapping turtles. So yeah, look out for that video coming soon as I uh, start releasing these guys. For now, it's going to do it. This is Parker Swamp. Uh, stick around. Give me a like, a comment. Let me know what you think of this video. And uh, check out my other stuff. Peace.